Hey guys, it's Taz101 Saga, back for another unboxing. This is the best unboxing video I've ever done to date. I haven't even started yet, but I already know that that is going to be my concluding thought. So what we're going to do first is uh, we're going to unbox things one by one. And uh, three things came today. I've also got a little um, video at the end for you, Greg, because I know you're watching, regarding the MWS. So I thought I'd wait till I had a proper video with a higher quality camera running so I could uh, show you that better than my trashy phone. Post has been generous today. New pair of mechanics. I shredded my old ones, so that's sorted. So what have we got first, boys and girls? A package. Now, a little shout out before we get unboxing. I bought both of these on a whim from my very good friend, Mr. Josh Sapsford, who's in Kent. And these aren't, these are obviously a second hand. He's had both of these for years. This particular one's never been skirmished. The other one has, we'll get to that in a minute. The second one is the biggest airsoft gun I've ever bought, but I thought it was about time I invested in such things. Now, both of these are very special because what Josh likes to do with a lot of his guns is he buys all of the real parts that he can legally find and source and put on an airsoft gun and then he just puts them around the base gun, weathers up the, uh, the stock parts and everything and they just look absolutely wonderful. Now this particular gun I've actually handled a few times at War and Peace uh, back years ago when I met him. He's had this one a long time. It's upgraded internally and everything so with a little bit more work it should be a nice skirmisher as well. So, I've really been looking forward to getting these, and Josh, thanks for going through all the trouble of uh, sending these two to me. Now, Josh uh, loves to waterproof his packages. If, if you've never seen what a whole roll of tape on a box looks like, that is it. So now that I've removed every home base in Kent's entire stock of sellotape, I've now got to the box. I'm going to have to assemble this off camera and then I will show it to you because I know Josh has broken it down into the upper and lower. And he's got an aftermarket GMP pin which I have no idea how it goes together until I look at it. So what is this boys and girls? I have to say this looks even better than I remember. Let's put the mag in. Look at that. I'll move the camera obviously closer up now. I've got an M16A1 already, an AEG one, but what makes this different? Well, this started its life, the base gun, as a WE, and Josh has upgraded like every single square inch of it. He's weathered the receivers. I don't know if that shows from over there. Like I say, I only I put the camera over there just so my reaction fits in, but I'll move, I'll, I'll do a run over these close up in a moment. Uh, it's got a real stock, it's got the early stock as well, the correct sling swivel, obviously it's a real one, the real pistol grip, uh, the short 20 round mag, which actually holds 20 BBs. It's got original handguards. I'm not sure if the sling loop's original, but he's weathered the whole rest of it. It's got the early tulip style flash hider as well, the thin profile pencil barrel, which was lacking on my AEG one. God, that's a gorgeous gun. I say, I say it looks even better than I remember it. Man. Josh has done a great job. Yeah. Oh, that's a lovely action. Damn. What a beautiful sound. I know he's up, you've upgraded it internally with... Um, RA Tech steel parts, which fit well on this gun. He's already um, he's got the thing shooting and working. A lot of people is hit and miss with RA Tech. I've already seen one thing though that I can um, sort out, and that's the bolt catch is a little wiggly, which may affect the function somewhat. I uh, might put a couple of shims in there. Yeah, let's take a look at the girl, shall we? So I say I haven't even opened her up yet. I just threw it together. Oh, charging handle. Yeah. There's the bolt, it's the RA Tech steel, it's got the aluminium nozzle. Yeah, that does need a new O-ring, yeah, that's, that's cut. No worries, I've got Lowe's. All intact. We've got the charging handle. And obviously the buffer spring, I'll have to take that out at the moment. But yeah, everything's all in there, which is nice. Oh, this actually has the real, like, drop-up charging handle, yeah. See, the, the MWS doesn't have those two little bits on the side, because that's what I'm used to. Um, yeah, you actually have to sort... It's like a real AR charging handle. You have to drop it in and out. Just the amount of real parts that will fit on a WE as well. It's just stunning. Um, all the problems with WE mostly come from stock WEs. Once you upgrade them and tune them up, they're, they're pretty damn functional. I mean, 
It's still not as good system as the MWS, without a doubt, but that's beautiful, man. I couldn't be more happy with that in terms of like the whole aesthetic. That is absolutely stunning. I'm not putting this on either, Josh. This is wow. This is that is absolutely gorgeous. I bought my electric one down which is over there. Actually, I'll put them side by side so you can see original parts compared to my attempt at weathering and we'll see how they come out. I'm going to unbox the next one and then we'll take a look at both of them close up. But that is absolutely, wow, that is amazing, man. Josh really knows what to do with putting these things together. He's um, He's got a long history in uh, reenacting. He's a massive kit nerd. He knows all about the parts and everything, much more than I do about the Vietnam stuff and everything. And uh, yeah, I'm blown away by that. I um, I know the video's rolling, but I just had to take a minute. That's absolutely gorgeous. So I was really excited for both of these guns, because uh, um, I've always loved that that M16. I just thought it looked the biz. Every time I saw it War and Peace, I was like, I'm really jealous of that. That's such a nice... At the time, I couldn't afford a gas blowback rifle. Even. However, this one, I was, I was super hyped for this one, mate. <laughs> Look at that bastard. This is a type of airsoft gun that I haven't yet bought in terms of how it's classified in the real world. I have an LMG, but I don't have a GPMG. And no, it's not actually the British GPMG, but it's in the same category. Those that know me won't be too surprised by uh, me buying such a thing. Let's see what we have there. Right. Now, before I take this off, this has got a real steel bipod, a real steel stock, a real steel carry handle, a real steel sling, and probably something else I forgot. Josh will fill me in. So I'm really excited to see it. I haven't seen this one in person, only on his uh, photographs, which are all kind of from a distance, so we'll see. Oh boy. That is one nice looking puppy. Oh, you put the, yeah, you put, I see you put the belt in too. What's that? One, two. I've got enough rounds. Yeah. I, I dug my inert 762x54R out. I'm sure people start to guess what this is as I slowly remove things. Right. We have a sling. And to any real nerds, this will give it away straight away. We have an ammo box. A rather uh, nicely used sort of... Um, patina on the high edges, which is something I do artificially, but Josh has already done it, so there you go, you just saved me a job. I don't want to even touch that. That's beautiful. Thanks, mate. And we have here, I hope this all sort of shows up, this box has taken up so much room. If you can come out, I've got to be careful with the wiser. This is a Soviet-made PKM general purpose machine gun. Universal machine gun, whatever you want to call it. Anywhere you find an AK in the world, you'll find one of these not far away. Look at that baby. I see what you mean by the uh, the usage on the bipod, Josh, but that's got a beautiful sort of patina on it, which is very nice. Oh, look at that. Right, let's get the... Uh, oh, it's got like a DP-style bipod catch. Yeah, I see. Right, and that just uh, comes up. Handle, yeah. Right, so now that the box is gone, we have a PKM. Let's put the mag on, shall we? So she sits in this bracket. I'm not sure exactly how that. Uh... Oh, I see. Just didn't have it over far enough. Right, there we go. Been a long time since I've played with one of these at War and Peace, so uh, the airsoft one's all pretty uh, similar. We got a uh, fold up stop rest. Nice sight picture there, we've got a real real back sight and everything. Carry handle, yeah, lovely. It's even got the uh, what would be the chamber brush, but I think it's a front sight adjustment tool. It's an original PK stock. The top cover is similar to like the AK where you sort of push the button. This has a nice spring in it as well, it doesn't just sort of slap down like the Mini Me, which is nice. One thing I will do, Josh, though, I do this to everything. I'm going to rewire that to Dean's, of course. Due to the PKM having its feed pour, on the underside and the real the real steel. The belt actually goes in the opposite way up to what most belts do. Normally they say brass to the brass, but the PK goes in the other way because the feed pour is actually actuating it from underneath. So they've actually got the 
under this feed tray, which is where the round sits on the real one, they've got a quick change barrel mechanism, which I've seen our user rotate this and the whole barrel just comes out. So, uh, oh yeah, forget there's no spring in that one. Quick release spring. Obviously A and K's the, uh, the base gun and everything. I think internally he said he's only, you've only changed the, the rubber and all that. But, uh, look at that big beauty. I bet it's light now, this doesn't strike me as heavy at all. The PKM isn't exactly one of the heaviest GPMGs on the planet. In fact, it's got a reputation for being light. But when you fill this thing up with like 5,000 rounds, that's going to be some wasty stuff. No, that's absolutely beautiful. I'm chuffed with that, mate. Especially the real bits on it, because they actually, where they've actually been issued, it makes the whole gun look much more realistic because you've actually got wear and everything on it. Uh, it's even got the um, the replica like dust cover, which only which is activated by the bolt carrier, so it only opens to release a spent case into the left when the bolt is actually ejecting. So it's a very sealed up design. You've got one here for the empty belt, one for the uh, cartridges, which is beautifully uh, weathered. I don't know if that's an original one, Josh, or if you did that, but. Uh, God, what a good looking weapon that is. I've always loved these. I love these, the GPMG, the MG42. I'm just a sucker for like, belt fed stuff. You'd know that I have a Maxim. Let me just grab the other one quick. All right, so let's take a proper look at these two then. Start with the 16. That's an original stock. And that receiver's been beautifully weathered. Just look at the work Josh did on that. Josh, I am going to kiss your ass because you're someone that I really respect and have idolised for years, really. Just the amount of passion you put into these things and your reenactment and all the gear you've got. It's always what I wanted to be like. The only thing is I just don't have the space. <laughs> but if I could, you know what I'd do. Look at that. That looks exactly... I mean, other than the lack of sort of the Colt AR-15 and US property markings that would be back here and everything, like... Disregarding that, you'd think that was an original receiver. That looks exactly like the parts kits you see on the internet. Obviously, this is all a real grip and real hand guards and everything. In a minute, I'll put that next to the uh, the electric one. You can see the uh, see how mine stacked up with my weathering job. But just look at that. Can't go over how good that looks. That's just absolutely stunning. Is that an original uh, Delta ring? Let me know, because that. It's got a little tiny bit of sort of light surface rust on it by the looks of it, which makes it seem original, which is nice. Got the old uh, bullet tip to adjust the rear sight windage. Elevation was only done at the front. I do have an original sling, which is on the other gun at the moment. I'll whack that onto this one. Then I'll keep my 203 on the electric one, so that's nice. So moving up to the PKM then. You can see there, that's an original bipod, so it has all the... Sorry about the shadows, my house is dark as a dungeon has the patina, might be able to see it better if we go on this side. I'm just trying not to get them missing. Yeah, it's not showing up too well, but it's there, trust me. Lovely patina, that's the uh, the long style um, muzzle brake. There's a shorter one. I'm not sure if this is the early or the late one, because someone let me know. I'm not a, I'm not an expert on the sort of the small things that were changed on the PK, PKM. The PKM, the, the PK, excuse me, original had a, a fluted barrel and it was about three pounds heavier. So a bit like they did with the AKs, they lightened them up and um, improved the stamping technology and uh, sort of changed a few little things. What's the markings there? They've even got the fake gas regulator. Uh, how this works is if it's too hot to touch with the barrel, you can use a cartridge tip from the ammo. You can adjust it like that, which is a really cool design feature. I love that. I've always loved that about the PK. I just thought that was really neat. This also acts to cam the barrel forward. It won't at the moment because the wedge is still in. So when it's all fouled up from carbon, because obviously there's a lot of gas coming back and everything, you can use that to wedge the barrel out if it's tight in there. So there's the top cover. Original backside, which is uh, beautiful. Not much to see inside, because obviously it's an airsoft gun. Um, it's even got the replica uh, piece that pushes the round down into this uh, feed tray, because the PKM, where it's using rimmed cartridges, it can't push them forward out of the belt like uh, the, Jeep, the uh, GPMG Mag 58 and uh, MG42 and guns like that, because you've got this large rim which sits in there. 
it basically gets pulled out with the bolt carrier, pushed down into a second feed tray, and when you pull the trigger, it then goes down on the bolt face and chambers. It's, it's actually very unique in how it works like that, in terms of guns that are still being used today. You add sort of that principle on the Maxim, although it's quite different from this. Uh, got the cock handle there, which obviously doesn't do anything. This one's for the, uh, the drum mag. Although I'm gonna, I'm looking into ball gear options at the moment because I'd like to either get the insert or the new mag that has no wires to it. The inert rounds though help to cover up the. Um... Oh, that's quite funny. Josh put a sponge in there so the BBs don't fall out and such. This is a. Is that a cover for something? No, oh, I must just clip up in there or something, right? Not. I haven't handled one of these for years, so I don't remember what all the stuff is. I'm not super familiar with them. I just know how to. Stick a battery in and fire them and whatever, but uh, yeah, mate's actually got one. They're pretty heavy once they're loaded up, anyway. But yeah, I mean that's just what a piece. It is aiming at a black chalkboard, so I don't know if the sight picture will even show. But it's essentially a sorry about all the washing and shit. It's essentially an AK sight on backwards, because this gun is essentially an upside down AK mechanically. Uh, it's got the same sort of gas piston which runs in the gas tube here and then you've got the same sort of bolt carrier just a larger bolt bolt face because you've got this big wide rim on the cartridges but other than that it's it's an AK yeah I'm not sure what else to say other than thank you so much Josh I mean that's just what a steal obviously this is the most I've, I've spent because it's two guns at once and neither of these are cheap anyway because they've got a lot of real bits on but Josh made me a wonderful deal as a friend and uh I still consider myself to have mates rates, considering how many real parts are on these as well. They're a lot more. They're worth a lot more than a stock one, a hell of a lot more, especially the PK, because even the bipods alone are a lot of money. Never mind all the other stuff that's on it. So, uh, yeah, thanks a lot, mate. I'll put this next to the other M16 now and see how my weathering came out, because I'm quite curious to see how that looks on camera. Right, so obviously Josh's is going to look better by default because it's actually got real bits on. But what I wanted to do is sort of compare my weathered handguards to originals. I think I did a pretty good job, really. I mean, I tried to scratch them up. But yeah, the real handguards do wobble. That's normal on ARs. But as for the receivers, I sort of... You can see there the bare metal. This isn't actually bare metal. This is paint. Let me try and find a better, better part because I know that front sight came out nice. There we go. So you can see there, that is not bare metal. That is all paint put on with a sponge because it gives that same effect. Same with the ring up here as the wear. And that's real wear. Obviously, that isn't. So I think I did all right, really. There's something that's wrong about this one. This is originally a Simon, but it's a full sweat custom. It's got the A2 barrel. You can actually see that this is thinner. I know they're not level, but you can see that. For some reason they put these weird sort of corrugated serrations, I'm not sure what that was about. And this is the later sort of bird cage. that's not totally correct either, there should be more space between them, it should be all the way around. But this is the tulip style, which has got a lovely sort of patina on it as well. Right, so the last little segment that I'll put in this video, this is for you Greg. I don't have the little spring, this is the TMMWS bolt by the way, in case anyone else got this far. I don't have the spring that's in there, it flew off. Although, this doesn't actually affect anything. All it means is this uh, moves. Mine's got Allen bolts in, rather than Phillips head screws, which I think the original does. But other than that, the uh, details are all the same. Once that spring is gone, if you lose it, don't worry about it. So, this is super easy to take apart. The reason I'm showing you this is so you can properly lube the piston O-ring. So just take both of these out. Don't do them up too tight anyway, just hand tight. Don't over thread them. Because when you clean the gun, just check they're tight anyway. And then what happens now is, try to avoid touching the oily parts. You want to pull the nozzle head forward slightly. I'm trying to do this around the camera, apologies. Lift this up off over that part and it will come off like that. Put that to one side. Now, shift in position, you have this little bit here which holds the back of the nozzle spring on. In fact, I will zoom in so you can actually see this ball better. There's some little nubs there so it gives you something to hold on to. That comes off and now the nozzle is free to move. So just push on the back there and you can pull the entire 
Oops, I'm not knock the rifle off the freezer. Pull the entire nozzle out. Now what you need to do now is get some nice silicone grease on this, anything rubber safe, and just keep the inside of that nice and clean. As long as you've leaved this well, you don't really need to leave that as well, but you should have it, make sure you don't lose that o-ring, just keep that on the end. It doesn't have to sit perfect because it will when you put it at the back, but make sure that you've got this nice and um, lubed up because you shouldn't have air pissing out leaking around it because it will make it inconsistent. So to put it back together, you won't be able to put this on unless you hook it with the Allen key. So you put it back in until the silver part at the end of the nozzle comes back out of there again. And if you notice there's a hole in it, what this allows you to do is put an Allen key or a tool through and then you can hold it back like this as you reinsert this little piece, which I'm basically doing blind right now, but I've done it enough times. Right, there we go. And now she's back on. Now all you do is put your... Hold this forward, and these two bits need to go on the inside, so you just sort of wiggle that. This will wiggle freely when that's not on, so if you can't get it on, just make sure you've got that level. It's easier than it looks, it's just awkward because I'm trying to do it around a tripod. But you just sort of, there you go, stick that on. Put your screws back in, and voila! So guys, that's everything for today. Thanks for watching. Please feel free to rate, comment, subscribe, and if you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comments. God bless Jobs, Josh Sapsford, you absolute legend of a man. If you want a Sapsford special, you need to contact Josh before I buy all the rest of them. So take care, everybody, and I'll see you soon.